life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Yeah, welcome to another edition of CLG Arden Raha's Centenary Podcast. We have five or six of these here now in the can, and we're keeping it varied, and we're trying to mix it up here a little. So I thought this evening I would look back at the 2010 uh, Donegal Under-21 side. Of course, we had three representatives on that there side. They were Connor Classen, Peter Oliver Manelis, and Paddy McGrath. Lads, you are very welcome to the show. Hi, Frank. Good morning, Good. Frank. Cheers, Frank. Do you know what? Actually, you know, Connor, uh, you actually look the fuzziest there. Peter's pretty clear looking in New York City. It's, it's hard to believe that, that he's thousands of miles away and you're just only up the road. Bad <laughs> wife, eh? Listen, boys, the reason I wanted to chat is, is because, listen, we're all probably aware of, you know, Jim McGuinness and what he brought to Donegal in terms of the senior setup. And, you know, we're well clued into and how that under-21 scene went. But I suppose just the genesis of that there under 21 thing i mean where, where jim went and where he where he took donegal maybe over a four or five year spell i mean as he went along you know he gained clout you know he gained respect and it was probably easy to row in behind i mean we're all aware of you know downings and that famous meeting with the senior squad jim whips out a newspaper article donegal are rated 19th in the country and within two hours he's told you that you're going to have an Ulster medal in your back pocket. You're going to have all Ireland's. But you have to conform to this alternative, almost shaming approach. Um, at that stage, you know, Jim, he had some currency, I suppose, because he, he'd managed Nave Connell or he'd helped out with Nave Connell and they'd won medals. But, you know, still with the senior meeting and downings, senior players are on record saying that they thought this man was crazy. I mean, what I want to know and hear about, I mean, are the initial under-21 hookups Ollie, I'll start with you. I mean, the under twenty one competition, it was it was Ulster and All Ireland straight knockout, no league, been no trials. I mean, Jim from his involvement would have knew the good club players in the county. So was it a case of a text message, here's training, this is my panel, and you're in? Um basically, yeah, like, like Jim would have coached me at like schools level and the comp and all, and you know, I suppose he knew all the R Drab boys well. Um so we know when we arrived, mm. so I think the Aura Centre was like the first big training session, you know, and it was just great to be involved in that. And, you know, it was great, it was great memories for me, that whole under-21 campaign, you know, and especially being with the two boys there it was fantastic, you know. Yeah, Connor, can you remember that first to get together? I mean, was it a, as Ollie says, is the Aura, I was going to say, was it a pitch session? No, but- I, I can remember it pretty well. There was actually three trial matches. Right. Um, I remember it well because I actually tried to get out of the second one, and uh, I had a rugby match in Dublin, and I just said, I just I remember it so well because I was on Old the dart. Waverly. <laughs> I was on the dart, and I I sent him the message, and I kind of thought nothing of it because I wasn't expecting to hear back to him, and I hadn't the phone put back in my pocket, and it went, and it was him, and he just gave me one of them kind of um, like, he was like someone I I had never met before definitely at that period in my life and definitely as a coach because he had this unbelievable way of getting through to you like a lot of coaches come up with rhetoric and say the same thing over and over again but even like none of us barely knew him I remember even at the very first trial again the the pitch was a wee bit frosted over it was in the depths of winter I think Mark Cassie drove us up and um, he just came into the dressing room and he just sort of spoke about things that I suppose we had all all thought about, but nobody ever came and put them into words. Like, um, like I'll give you an example. I wasn't asked to a minor trial. Paddy didn't start in his minor team. Mm. We ended up playing for the only goal twenty ones. So, like what he spoke about too did come true in terms of, you know, if you work hard, if you buy into this, we're going to change things. Only goal is going to be different. Um. That kind of mantra, there was nobody else talking that way. He was definitely the first person that I ever heard. And, like, he wasn't in gently, softly saying these things. He was absolutely wailing on tables 
at the trial. Wasn't that right, Paddy? Yeah. And like the names, each team was, it was so well organized. It was so crisp. Like, I, I personally, I, I had never experienced anything like that before. And was it a similar ceremony, Connor, to what was given that day in Downing? Uh, I imagine, obviously, Paddy was there. I think you, you, you were probably there as well. But like, was it along the same lines of lad? This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to want. And listen, the under twenty one competition, it's, it was you know it's shoehorned into a certain stage of the year. I think it was Wednesday night. A lot of those games were on. I mean, was this Jim? Jim was probably got that job. He'd gone for the senior job twice at that stage, hadn't got it. So they probably you know this is let's see what you're going to do with us here, gang. And maybe another year's Donegal. You know, maybe we lost first round games. Didn't didn't advance too far. But when he lays out on the table that an Ulster medals in sight and so is in all Ireland. Are you as apprehensive or, and maybe as doubtful as some of those more experienced senior players were in Downings that day or because you are young, maybe naive and maybe aren't carrying the emotional baggage that maybe a lot of those players were that you just made you say, yeah, why not? I mean, was there a different atmosphere and, you know, immediately after the under-21 meeting and there might have been maybe a year and a half or not even a year and a half, probably eight or nine months later, late 2010 when he got the senior job? I suppose I'll, I'll go on that one again. Um, with us, the cycle of things was kind of different because all three of us were trying to make the team. Mm. So then you eventually make the team and there's kind of euphoria about that. And what he did with that there was what the whole management team did with that there was they kind of wiped away the euphoria of making the team. So there was another meeting, I think, in the Mount Aragil Paddy. I think we had another meeting and I remember... I had a complaint about that there meeting as well because he was talking about savage commitment traveling up from Dublin. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, are you messing? And uh, I actually voiced my concerns. And I remember Maxi Curran having a pop at me then saying that, listen, it's a short season. You can manage it, Connor. And I was like, right, son. So I can imagine a young Connor class and with that, 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 uh, frosted blonde tips at 19 or 20 years of age putting his hands up and voicing his concern but Paddy <laughs> you know Connor touched on it there like, I don't think your underage career up until that date w- was too impressive I mean was there a sense of you that this year last year uh, at underage you want to make a dent in it I mean regardless of what Jim was saying is we're going to win I mean was that the initial aim for yourself you're on the panel let's make the team yeah Um. well I remember I remember well when Jim was appointed manager. Um, now we knew of Jim like from playing against them <coughs> against Glenties and that at um, a senior level. Um, um, but I suppose uh, I was on the team the year before and then was waiting to see who was going to be manager of the under 21s this year. Was it Sean Clerkin Jim, again, party that was there the year Sean Clerkin was manager, yeah. And then Jim's name popped up and Suppose, like I didn't know what to expect at that. Like, um, I suppose it was just yeah, it was the, probably jump from over the road. Like, mm. and just to have to wait and see. Like, but um, I can't remember there the you know the meetings early on uh, at the under twenty one. But I do remember that from a very early start, he can engraved in us that we were something going to be something different, um, and. There was a there was a huge buy in at, a, at an early stage anyway that I, that I thought um from everybody um and to this day that was the best group like I mean that was the most enjoyable journey I've ever been on as a, as a as a as a group or you know one of the you know the group of players that was on that there it was just um it was it was very pure like and everybody was giving it their all and mm. I think there was such a buy in. Um, from everyone um, and then as well as that to have Connor and Ollie you know going down the road with you as well was something special um, and, and to be in them plans like um, you know it, it was just a great time so it was um, yeah but, uh, no sorry carry on Paddy but no like I mean from a, a very uh, early time and that was kind of and around the winter time, and, and Ollie mentioned the aura there. Like we started training really, really hard. Um, we put on the runners, and we just run in the aura. And he, you know, he was getting us to do like 
simple drills but really really well like and you know we could see improvement week on week um and i remember how tough that training was probably because we weren't conditioned um was the way that the young lads are conditioned now you know yeah. but he had to maybe get us to a, a level very very quickly um and that resulted in really really hard training but um no, it was it was definitely um you know an eye opener and something that we knew that you know this man means business like. Was there much transformation in Jim maybe in his own confidence in delivering his message or how you know he wanted his teams to play? Say from that first time at under twenty one till maybe he walked out the door in two thousand and fourteen, or was that same conviction there regardless of what came after that? There was he the same person? In terms of his, you know, his delivery to his teams at, you know, half time before a game, or did he grow in confidence like as well as success came? I think he had a great passion even then. Like you know, like kind of, you know, he went for the Donegal job twice and he didn't get it. Like he really wanted, you know, to to get that Donegal job, mm. and um, he had a real passion for, for for Donegal as a county and for the football we played. Um, and for the people at Donegal, and I think he got that and installed or installed in the team, so that when we went out, he he wanted us to know that we were playing for for our county and we were playing for the people, and that no matter if we won the game or we lost the game, as long as the people in the stand and the people at home were proud of our performance that day, um, that was the big thing um that i that i got out of it anyway you know so you were kind of playing for something and it kind of didn't really matter um he said always used to say that the result will look after itself like as long as we would play just as as hard as we could like you know yeah and listen ollie um patty or maybe even connor kind of touched on it there we talked a week ago uh, with some of the lads about you know the amount of successful underage sides that kind of passed through the club in succession and I mean at that time to have three representations on that squad it was brilliant and it was probably you know it was probably an endorsement of how we were doing at that their stage as well three young you know exciting prospects coming through the ranks and there they are on that their journey and it was a brilliant journey too every Wednesday night like clockwork was knockout tournament but as momentum gathered you really look forward to those Wednesday nights but again it was brilliant for the club that used three and probably made it easier as well as as Connor says, traveling, training, and, and things like that there. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, for me, you know, watching, like, coming off the bench and all those games, and, like, a special moment for me in the Ulster final was, you know, coming off the bench, being on there at the end mm. when the final whistle blew. It was something that was great to be, you know, and the two lads there as well, you know. So, you know, it made it all worth it. There was a lot of hard work, a lot of traveling, and, you know, it was, it was very enjoyable, and, Working with Jim McGuinness and playing with players like Michael Murphy, like it was, it was a great time, you know. Yeah, it's probably one of them first times when, if you knew you were coming off the bench, you probably knew you had a job to do. Whereas maybe pre two thousand and ten, back, you know, if you weren't named the first fifteen, you were thinking it's because you're not good enough. But that was a stage, and particularly now, Gaelic football players come on to close out the game. Players come on with energy. I mean, was that something Jim was keen to impress on you guys as well? That listen. The five or six subs or, or how many you're allowed to use at that their stage, it's about closing out these games because you know there was one or two games there where Donegal had to close them out for two or three point turnovers in terms of winning and losing. So I mean, was that something that was new as well that when you aren't one to fifteen, there's still a mass of fifteen or twenty minutes in you? Ah uh, yes, like there was uh, it was it was unusual at that time like to have a you know, a proper job, you know, for all the players in the pitch. Like mm. Jim brought that us for the first time ever you know every player in the pitch knew what he was doing and as you said to close out games like that first game against Armagh was was massive for us it was massive for Jim massive for Jim's career and uh, to get over the line that day because you know just it was about fun too, just I could, like things yeah. could have been so much different I mean maybe don't, Jim wasn't everybody's cup of tea and if he had to fall against Armagh at their stage maybe you know he might never have got that senior job and people might have been happy because I from the outside looking in, you always think that this was, you know, a revolutionary guy with ideas that maybe spooked certain people. And uh, if that hadn't come together that first night, under extreme pressure in a knockout competition, 
uh, three point difference, one nine to nine points. I mean, what came after might never have, have been. Oh, definitely. I agree. You know, it was, that was a huge night in Jim's career. Do you remember the sequence of events? I was going to, or the sequence of games. I was going to ask you there and put you on the spot, but you started off there with our mark. And you remember the semi final was? Oh, it was Derry. Derry. Scoreline. Uh, scoreline. It was our best performance, but I can't remember the scoreline. Probably won by about eight or nine. No, one eleven to a nod ten. The actual final, you said two eleven to nod eight to spare over Cavan. And then Tipperary in the All Ireland semi final was 12 points to four, which was pretty, you know, convincing. So that took us up to the final. Uh, Dublin then. Paddy, you famously broke the jaw, I'm guessing, in the semi final. There were serious doubts over your participation in that. And there's a passage in Jim's book where you tell him, No, Jim, I'm actually playing. It's kind of growing legs at their story too. And people chat about it a lot. I mean, go back to that there in terms of the instant that it happened and maybe the worry that you were going to miss out in an all Ireland final? Yeah, well, it happened in the in the temporary game. Um, it happened fairly early in the game, so it mm. did, I think. Um, but um, I was taken off towards the end of that game, so it was. Um, didn't realise that it was as bad as a broken jaw, like, but I kind of I knew something was really bad when they... They give us steak and chips after the game, hey, and I wasn't fit to eat it, so uh, I had to settle for a bowl of soup instead. But um, now, look, I tell you, you know, I, I knew I had to just get it fixed. But there was a kind of a short turnaround too. I think it was two weeks or something like that to the final from that game, and then so I went down to Letter Kenny the f- following day, and I had to get an X-ray, and then I had to go to Alton Gavin and. It was the following day then before I got the operation on my jaw and that. So when you say an um, operation, I mean, is this under anaesthetic out of the count and like yeah. a, a setting or a pin and back? How does that there work? Yeah, they they had to put on the plate. Um, they had to remove a few teeth and then they had to put on the plate and they had to open up and at it like it, it it was well swollen and stuff after it. So, but um a few days later i was fit to start running again like so it wasn't too bad like but even shaking the shake you're fit to start running with a broken jaw yeah it was a but i mean it was like we we were never in this uh position before and you definitely didn't want to miss out like it would um, it would would not get the green light now would it well like i mean it's it's well it's hard to know like but you know you don't play with your jaw like you know it's it's different like if you if you had a, if you, if you had a oh, hamstring you know there's nothing you really can do with it because you need it but you know i think you i think you, jim's book says what's the worst that can happen and i think the surge that reset your jaw so you can break it again and yeah. you're happy enough with that there the, the, the surgeon the surgeon did say that to me now in fairness but i uh, listen hey it, it, it was grand you know it wasn't it wasn't as it wasn't a big deal left you know Brilliant. so Connor, we'll jump in a second but ollie just you you know you may follow us on this talk to us about the final and this virus or bug outbreak that you know brought the squad to his knees i spoke with anton mcfadden a while back and he says it was just as bad graphic and nasty as we're led to believe i mean it, it was crippling and debilitating, wasn't it? Uh, it yeah, it, it really was. Um, you know, people just don't really remember that. Like, the, Donegal played very well that day against Dublin. Mm. Like, you had two lads, and Thomas one of them, that had to come off early, I think, you know, because of the virus. And yeah. It was just, you know, very unfortunate turn of events on the eve of the biggest game of the, everybody's lives, you know. And you squatted yourself so well. I think it was 1-8 to 1-10. Of course, that, that penalty of Michaels could have won it for you as and the end, none of you, none of you guys uh, were under under the weather that day. Day, day were you? Or it was. I Connor, was you on, were. We were on. We were had given trying to keep our let or take as much of Lucasade sport as you could drink. But it, it, some people had to still deal with the virus on the day. I was just coming off off the end of it. I think it 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 kind of got nearly a, a, a seven or eight of us. Mm. God, it, it, we're either at some phase of it. Um, Daniel McLaughlin as well had it uh, quite severe, if memory, memory serves me correct. Like we're talking uh, about uh, nausea, uh, vomit, and diarrhea. Yeah, on, on the day, the, you know, it was a sore throat. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a throat infection. 
um, well, th- that's what I had, mm. and um, we we're just in bad shape. But like saying that, you, you know, it's funny. You go back to the Ironman game, and you and you go back to the the start of things for Jim. Like the pressure he was under was immense. Yeah. But the effort he was putting in was immense. Plus the effort he was asking us to put in was immense. Mm. So like, like, he was traveling down to Dublin to train us. And them sessions in in in, uh, in DCU, like they're almost legendary at this stage. But people telling them stories don't do them justice because yeah. they were the tightest sieges. That's why we have you on here now to tell we, those we, stories. We had tight sessions in Galway with Anthony Thompson. Too. Ah, get out of your town! Get out! Of, you're over there we, spoofing. <laughs> we we used to be panicking because we, we used to get rumors that he might come over. <laughs> oh, gee. the stress them them weeks put me under we had a great gang down there Anton Danny Curran Ollie Doherty Jumper uh, there was a whole host of, 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 of lads and I remember getting the bus because Danny and, and, and Jumper were out the south side and I was just telling the boys these boys will not bother with the bus just say we missed it or whatever or just come up with something <laughs> this is absolute hell but every night we would go this is becoming and... a real current theme Connor throughout this 121 campaign is your negativity when Maxi Curran tries to nip it in the bud right away you're still at it in Dublin and you wouldn't put a dog to put what he put us through like it was the tightest sessions there was a couple of boys there was a couple of uh, county seniors came and trained with us I think uh, Martin McElhenney came out one night and he vowed never again uh, Mark McGowan came out one night and vowed absolutely never again. Wow. It was just, it was just, it was only five or six of us. I can't remember the exact number. And we just dogged it in and dogged it out for like two hours. Yeah. And like, in fairness, in fairness, there's no wonder why Michael Murphy went on to be the man he went on to be. Because in those sessions, number one, you don't want to do them. Number two, you know what's coming. And number three, you need somebody to pull you through. And like for all of us in that, he was the man. Like he never let you down. Like he was always trying to pull you along. Or like I used to have him on my back for sprints, like and you know, I <laughs> he'd be rolling encouragement in my ear. Like I'd be just thinking of just wanting to get home, but an incredible, an incredible, incredible training too. I had never exper- experienced anything like that before. This was before we had played games. This was mm. before we knew who was playing. Yeah, like we didn't know what the team was going to look like at this stage. Mm. And he was asking us for basically the commitment you'd ask an intercounty player now. That was all new to Donegal. Mm. Nobody had ever heard of this sort of these crazy training regimes and uh, a, a manager traveling down from Dublin to train a handful of players. Like so. There was a huge pressure there to get over the line in the first game. Yeah, and listen, if Michael Murphy was the person driving it on in Leinster and in Dublin, Ollie, you were probably the guy driving it on down in Galway. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, listen, I'm afraid not. We we were trying to organise this here tonight, and uh, we said that Friday night, no, it doesn't suit Thursday night. Ollie goes, I train Tuesday and Thursday nights. And he goes, yeah, do you know what? That'll be better crack than training. I'll give training on Thursday and do the podcast. Um, <laughs> oh, he I hung you there, Ollie. He hung you. He hung you I out there. I don't mind. I don't Connor, mind Connor, Connor just, uh, I'll just let you finish. I mean, when the journey ends, I mean, after Dublin, we all know what happened. We'll not rake over old ground too much. But is there a desire right away to kind of be part of a senior setup once Jim gets the gig? Because this was kind of a form of, sports brainwashing like I mean that in a good way you guys were obviously hooked at the end of that you probably didn't want to end the way it ended against Dublin who ones you're probably thinking this man moves into senior now you know there's hard currency of senior medals in terms of Ulster at the very least I mean was that the way it was because I mean you obviously and uh, Paddy I think went into that their senior setup right after that was were, at that their stage had you conformed to Jim's ways um I suppose it's, it's it's a hard one to answer because the following year I was twenty one, so we had the twenty ones again. So oh, we had another year left, right? We had another year left in it, so me and Ollie played in that, and he was trying to juggle both things, and I was in the senior setup as well at the same time. But I'd always said that I was going to go to the states when I was twenty one, no matter what. So no matter what happened in my life, I was going to go to America, the states, and. 
I suppose I look back now and go, maybe I shouldn't. Well, maybe I should have. It's it's very hard right. to know yeah, because yeah, yeah. in 2014, kind of when it suited me to give it a big push, I got injured. Yeah, and it didn't work out. And it kind of goes to show you, you know, if if you take your foot off the pedal at that level at all, period. Like obviously at 21, they didn't realize that. But if you take your foot off the pedal at all, you're not going to. You can't. It's not a switch. You can't yeah. just go back to it. You know, and uh, I wouldn't say I I don't harbor any regrets about it, but I, I made my decisions, mm. and whether I I was definitely hooked on, and I believed in the process when he told turn around. Told fellas they would win all Ireland's. I was definitely probably the only few people that believed that, but I could still believe it and live my own life. Of course, of course, of course. And listen, Paddy, um, Pat Shovlin was another guy that was part of that entire journey as well. Like it, it's still hard to believe that Pat's gone. I mean, Pat brought so much to that group, and, and he loved his time there as well. So when we say there was three years there, really, actually there were there was four years, wasn't there? That's right. Yeah, like uh, he definitely added to the journey. Um, and then even the years after that in the senior setup too, like, I mean, um, uh, he was such a character, like, you know, and just great to have about the dressing room. Um, and that's why Jim had him around. Like, he was mm. just fantastic. Um, it's so hard to believe now that he is gone, like, you know, and um, but we shared some great memories, like, you know, with Pat, like, and, um like like uh, like in 2012 me and pat would have done a lot of wee gigs together after the the the, the one on sam mcguire and stuff like that and you know it was all just cash, all cash though <laughs> it, it was um it was it was it was just a great time with him and that like and i uh, look at he he was such a good character so he was hey and always laughing always laughing and always having the crack like you know and it's yeah it's 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 um it's 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 difficult to believe that he's that he's gone, like you know. Yeah, and listen, that game that we had from Kentucky too was probably you know a great endorsement of how much people did think of him. I mean, the very best of the best showed up that day and played. It was brilliant to remember him that way, and I'm sure he was probably as proud as punch looking at that there because it was his the team that he wanted to pick on paper that more or less showed up that day, and it, it was great just that we were able to do that for him. Yeah. I uh, and like I suppose that under twenty one team too was kind of when I got to know Pat well first you know um like I wouldn't have known while well it would be a wee bit older than me and stuff like that in terms of you know his football career like we would have been down at the field and that with him but he just wouldn't have known too well but through the under twenty ones you know that's how I got to know him very well and then um got to know him well through the 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 following years then with Jim like but. She was so loyal to Jim as well, like, you know, mm. and um, look, it was great to have that game for him and it was great that the club organised that and, you know, got behind that game and um, and, and it was a, a fantastic day, like, you know, to, to for, for a memory for him, like, so. Yeah, and Paul Durkin and Michael Boyle would speak so highly of him as well mm. in terms of, of what he actually brought to the, you know, the goalkeeping coaching end of it and listen. Paul was so mm. central and what Donegal achieved as well, revolutionary really in terms of kick out. So, you know, Pat gets a lot of credit that and, and Paul's always, you know, keen to emphasize that the Pat deserves a lot of credit too. So listen, he contributed on and off the pitch when it was and time he, to even, work too. Yeah, and even under twenty ones, you know, Peter Boyle was just unbelievable yeah, yeah, that yeah. time. Like, I mean yeah. it, like if there was all stars uh going back then for the under twenty ones, um Peter would have got one, like, you know, his his kick out was um, savage, and you know he was, he was saving us at, at times. Mm, you no, know, during yeah, he was a young under twenty one. Peter at that stage, too, wasn't he? Sorry, Peter was a young under twenty one. Yeah, he yeah, he was. Uh, he was young, and then um, Jim brought him in, and you know Pat had to had to do his magic, work his magic. Yeah, Peter's you know, a good lad too, and a bit of crack. I could imagine yeah. that him and Patty or Pat would have bumped off each other pretty good. Listen, before we move on from that, just under twenty ones, reading Jim's book, Patty say Rory Cavanagh's book and even poor Kevin Casty's involvement in Declan Pogue's book I mean the senior players kind of readily admit that they were kind of looking to that promoted cluster that included the likes of you Mark McHugh Dermot Malloy I think the following year we'd had down in the first round of the championship but they were, they were already looking for you guys to spur it on could you sense that I just made the leap I mean Connor said Martin McAhoney saying that you guys are training harder than them 
did it almost feel like the horse was before or the cat was before the horse that their season that, that you guys were coming in maybe at, at a different level than maybe some of them boys have been used to? Yeah, like, yeah, that's something that was strange when we went in. You know, the boys were were wondering, you know, what's this McGuinness man all about, you mm. know? And they would come to us and they'd be asking, you know, what kind of training he's doing? What was this about? <laughs> they were, they were, they were inquiring, you know, and uh, because they, they knew, like, they'd seen, they seen the success that we did have, like, and suppose they, they thought that, you know, but it was just a case of, you know, them having to find out for themselves, you know. Hard and, way. Yeah, and it didn't you know, take it well long. Like, it was just like, yeah, wait, wait, wait and see, you know, that kind of a way, you know. So, but um, no, they were very. They, they they wanted to know. They wanted to learn, and they were they were delighted to see youth doing well in Donegal as well, like because that's 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 the that's an important thing, like for 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 teams, so. Yeah, Ollie, I mean, looking back at Jim then and where he went after that, it's kind of a little bit mad, like, you know, Celtic, China, and then the US a wee bit like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> ah, listen, it's, he said he's had quite a journey after it, mm. you know, um, fair play to him. As you, you could see from early on that time that, you know, he was something that was special and that, you know, Donny, Donegal are very lucky to have him. And... I suppose I'm not sure yet, but we may might manage to make all again someday, hopefully. Mm, but mm. who knows? I mean, do you guys? I don't know of you and the the big dog, uh, <laughs> uh, Stephen McCall Jr. I mean, when they were at Charlotte, was there any any plans to go down there and to get a game, or was there any you know that sort of sense, or maybe as time oh, to short there? Or? We we were looking at fixtures, we myself and big dog and size and Pat McGill, Peter McGill. We were basically looking at the flights and all, but. Mm. It was kind of hard to. They didn't play. They were, they were playing so far away. Aye. You know, and but anyway, it it, it didn't happen in the end. But it's a real pity, though. It would have been great, Craig. Yeah, and listen, we're chatting about football, and you and training and stuff. And I was chatting to a couple of lads from West Donegal there last week. A few Nivora boys that are in Australian footballs battering away. Footballs battering away out there as well. It seems as well. I mean, as a battering away in, in spite of of COVID or. You know the numbers. What are the numbers like in the states now at the minute on the east coast? And uh, well, I, they're not like they're they're not as bad as aware. You know, mm. I think in the last few months it's definitely got like a lot less strict here. Um, football's gone ahead as normal. Um, you know, which is good. You know, all, all, even though all the underage teams are back and as everybody's training. And, and the there's, vaccination there's, rollout is is at a serious pace too. Yeah, so this is a great pace here in New York, definitely. And uh, you know, just it's, we're thankful for things to be open up again, and we'll get playing mm-hmm. a bit of football now in the next few weeks. And you know, brilliant, Connor. You get a mention in Jimmy in this book too. Is one that always makes me chuckle. So I always send you a screen grab it when it pops up in my memories. But uh, Jim had big time for you, regardless of your, you know, going against the grain. Uh, I think he enjoyed you uh, uh, as a person as much as a player. Um. Yeah, you're not the only one that screen grabs that shot to me out of that book. A lot of people uh, send it to me. Um, uh, listen, it was it was a great experience. I got to be in an all Ireland final dressing room. I got to mm. be a part of teams. I got to see things. I got to see how real managers, real coaches, real people operate and develop and what it takes. And if you want to succeed, the the levels you have to go to I suppose I got a, a, an armchair right to, to, to see all that it still didn't mean it still never stopped me if I had something to say to him I would I would always say it I think I had that a very good relationship with him and nothing you know it's probably not mentioned about either with Pat I know Paul Durkin and them would say it but Pat was Pat was central and key to everything because I think I remember the time before the Armagh game when they were getting on the bus. I, I think it was Jim that was told me this. And he turned around and he asked him, you know, are we ready for this? Is this is this going to happen? And Pat straight away was like, yeah, we're ready for this. And he was constantly there, mm. you know, supporting. You know, if you're trying to do things, you need people around you that will support you. That's the foundation block for everything. And if you don't have solid support, you can't do it. And Pat gave... Jim that that support to do to do these things and and, and to think the way he thought, you know. Mm. So I, I do believe he deserves 
you know, my my vision of him, he, he, he is, he, I, I hold him in high regard for that. Oh, here, here, everybody does. Um, Paddy, what's the relationship like now for you guys? Because there's this kind of Kaiser Soce element to Jim, you know, puff and he's gone. And I think, you know, there's a group text message that kind of severed ties with Donegal, nothing grand, move on to the next thing. I mean, have you needed anything for him, say, like a reference or, I mean, is he contactable? Is there a bat signal that goes up or, you know, <laughs> I say he's one of the hardest man, men to get hold of now. You, you know, you might see him on Sky Sports and he's permanently beside the fireplace there up in Chrysler doing his, his own Zooms and WhatsApps. But, I mean, if you just went looking for something in terms of helping out, I mean, we just get hold of him. Well, me and McGraw would, I don't know about Ollie. He had, a, he, had a ha- he had a hamstring issue all the time that just happened at the same time of training every single Tuesday and uh, Thursday. It was like clockwork. Oh, I still have it. it. You still have it. I still have it. <laughs> uh, no, listen, um, just before we go as well, I mean, fingers are crossed that we're going to get some good news on April 5 because it's been, you know, it's been difficult over the last year and nobody ex- exactly quite knows what's happening, Paddy, just for yourself first. I mean, we talk about, you know, elite athletes in their county and, and what you guys are having to go through at the minute, not knowing if you are going to get the green light or, or not. And I know clubs are back at it on April 15th in Northern Ireland chatting to Owen McHugh this week as well. It, it, it's difficult times to kind of prepare, but the only thing is you just probably have a bit of experience for better or for worse from, from last year. So there's familiarity at least that, you, you know, that the, I suppose preparing on your own and it's completely alien or different to what you're used to. Yeah, I um, suppose for all of us, like we just want to clarity on when it's going to start. Like, But mm. I know that's not that's not easy for them to do that. Like um, they are doing their best, you know, to try and keep us in touch with them and everything. But I mean, uh, you know, it's just not possible at, at the minute. Um, hopefully, you know, the vac- vaccine will be rolled out or whatever. And, um, you know, the numbers will start going down as well. So there's a lot of positives, uh, you know, in this year, but I um, suppose like, what we would like to hear now is that the you know the training at least would start up you know um in April like and that you know boys would get back and maybe grips or whatever um just to be allowed to train and get a bit of fitness work hey um for club and county like you know so it's good for their mental health as well mm. hey for boys getting out and uh, exercising as well like after being lying up for a while you know um so but now look at this. It's kind of we're in the dark at the minute, like so. We're just kind of waiting to see um how things will pan out. Last year was a funny kind of season, you know. There's a couple of exceptional performances, and then obviously Cavan was just a flat one. That's kind of hard to explain. But how difficult was it last year in hindsight going into these empty arenas? I mean, contrast only go on to her own to what we'd usually experience to what we experienced that day. I remember chatting the afterwards at the you know the back of the stand, social distancing and everything, but. It's just a, a very surreal kind of vibe, even though he's at one. I mean, it, it just was very, you know, distant and, and abstract from what, what we'd usually see, you know, with players from Donegal and Tyrone and on a, an open around Ulster Championship game in McGrill Bar. Yeah, it's, 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 it is different. Like, um, I suppose without having the crowd there and that, and, you know, in the middle of the summer and stuff, with lovely days, and that's, mm. what, that's what it's all about. Like, and, when you have friends and your family and you have, you know, people from your local town there and, you know, it's uh, that they're all adds to it. Like, and when you don't have that, it's, it's different, but, you know, I suppose it's not going to be for too long, hopefully. And hopefully look at if uh, we were just happy at this stage now for football just to kind of happen, like, you know, and we were happy that the season went ahead last year too, like, um, that we were fit to go back training and stuff like that like but um, yeah like I mean it's, it's different um, is it difficult um, not really um, you're still going to put on the same effort um, you're still training uh, to one this, this, uh, the same way um, so look at it, it was a bit of a rare season last year um, but you know at the same time uh, we we're, were happy that there was a season like yeah and it's like behind closed doors for the reasons that we're running in terms of a pandemic, 
as opposed to being, being, being behind closed doors for a different reason. Like for us at home, I mean, Connor and even Ollie in America probably appreciate like it, it gave us something to watch and something to see. And Connor, that that was one of the main things too that we're can kind of experience in the outfit. And Harps were back at it last week. And it, it was like manna from heaven to get out to a game live and see it. But I mean, to see Donegal playing that, it gives us a wee bit of a distraction in that there because obviously club football mightn't get going for quite some time. But you guys, I mean, just love to check in and and maybe Donegal as a people and a population, it, it gives us that wee bit of, you know, something to talk about and just that wee bit of, as you said, distraction from, from this well, COVID-19. I can definitely tell you, watching a game of, 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 of soccer on telly compared to watching a game of Gaelic is absolute night and day. Like, the soccer is absolutely... Like Shamrock Rovers star corner. Even with my past in the, in the sport... I have to say, it is absolutely <laughs> horrific to watch yeah. all the time. And if, is, any, is, is. if everybody thinks that these coaches in the Premier League are miles ahead of people, they're absolute, they're totally wrong. Because they should see a GA County coach operating at the minute, and there's there's streets ahead of them. Streets. When you strip back fans from soccer, I've sat down to watch games myself and 10 or 15 minutes into it, then you're looking forward to all day, you kind of realise, you know, when that... When that you know, parameter of maybe atmosphere and noise isn't there uh, as a product aesthetically. It, it does pale in significance to Gaelic football. Maybe we're all a little bit biased, but it, that's what I would feel. And I mean, it's definitely a lot easier to watch, you know, a club game that there's no supporters at, or definitely an inter county game. But uh, <laughs> no, soccer's kind of gone down a lot of people's ex. Thank God, because Liverpool are doing so badly. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And what about out there, Ollie? Like, I think they're looking at boxing there at the minute. Certain states are opening up stadiums. I, I think Billy Joe Saunders and Canelo could be in front of a, a full crowd in Texas. I mean, what's the story in New York with basketball, ice hockey, American football and all that there in terms of spectators? It's just like, you know, it's down like 10% or 20%. You know, it's not... They're, Pubs they're, they're are getting 50, are they? <laughs> uh, no, that's the game, I think. <laughs> I think there was a big birthday party stateside all day there at the weekend as well. Steve McCall Jr. had, had the big 30. Yes, yes. Big, big our draw G man, he is. He had a big, uh, we had a big weekend for him now, Saturday. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. And listen, Connor, just on the club scene, uh, before we let you go, it's a split season, obviously. I, I don't know what gauge or what form they're going to roll out club football, but it, it's a big mess around town as well. It, for a small party like ourselves, it's, it's central to you boys, you know, having a bit of focus during the week between training games. And you would usually be back at it now collectively. But, I mean, this ball, excuse the pun, is going to be kicked down the road a little bit. They're probably looking at, at midsummer realistically, or hopefully, fingers crossed. It's a wee bit funny for us because we have a new man. We have yeah. a new manager this year. So he's extremely keen to get at it. And he's obviously in a position now where he hasn't had any access to yeah. players period not even can't even see them like so it's been a bit mental that way but like I suppose in the rea- in the real reality of things we're all quite lucky and, and, and privileged and sport will come back and whenever it does it does like so there's people with far bigger um, problems than us so I, I don't get too I don't get too stressed but I, I am looking forward to to working with Damien and to the next season, whenever that takes place. I know Paddy is too, because we've got a lot of a lot of young fellas are, 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 are saying the right things at the minute and they're getting that space to, to train on their own. And all we can do is see what sort of shape men land back in. A couple of old dogs could be worse, <laughs> worse a little worse for a while, but, you know, that's all you can do really at the minute. Of course, and lessons that season means Paddy McGrath is going to be landing back in phenomenal shape from County. Exactly, County. exactly. Be every Tuesday and Thursday night now as well. Unfortunately for Paddy, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's a big year for it's a big year for the club too. Oh, like course, you know, yeah. hundred hundred years, you know, and it's a it's a it's it's, it's a long time. Like so, massive. Uh, yeah. You know, if if things were different, you can imagine what would be going on down the field with. You know, with all the organising and stuff that's going on, like within the club, but um, uh, there'll be plenty of time for celebrating that too, like so. Yeah, and listen, last question, Paddy. We talked about a split season there. It probably makes life a little bit easier for you as well because I do remember over the years whether it was 
Eamon Doherty, Damien Dever, Brenton Boyle, you know, yourself. A lot of your time is occupied and consumed by county football. But I remember when those guys would come back to training and it would give, you know, the whole thing a, a huge lift and a huge amount of energy. And, you know, you as our county representative have been back now at training as well. As Connor says, with a, a new manager in there, I'm sure Damien will, will love to lean on you and have you there full time. So, I mean, at your stage of your career now, in your early 30s, it's probably nice that you're going to, get that chance to be involved with the club full year round because it's not even a tug of war. It's an impossible balance to strike, isn't it? Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it has been like, you know, trying to balance, you know, both like, you know, but um, no, this probably should have been done ages ago, like, you know, um, and uh, it would, it's, uh, I feel it would be a far better system, like, so it would be good to see how things work for, for a bit late for me now in my age, but, no, um, no. you know, for, for, for the other future generations, you know, see how they, they get on, like, and um, at least, at least it's a bit of clarity too, like, you know, between club and county, like, and there's no arguing, hey, about players and stuff like that that's gone on in the past and that's probably one of the things that I, you know, would have hated the most, like, you know, or um, the club manager, or, you know, the managers would have been wanting players and stuff mm. like that and it's just causing all sorts of problems, like, but, um, no, hopefully that'll that'll sort it out. Like, brilliant. Listen, boys, we'll leave it there. Ollie, will will we see you back June, July? Of you know, need to get him back. I in the game. Need to get him back. You never, you never know if it, if it can get back and it'll be a start. <laughs> you back, get, getting you back and getting you down to train. I know that's two different arguments. That's, uh, that's true. Oh, geez. Come here, man. It's it's absolutely been brilliant. Looking back at that, there a bit of crack, and I hope everybody else enjoys it as much as. I've enjoyed chatting with you tonight. Um, take care and stay safe, all right? Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Good man. Thanks.